What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back with another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. So in a quick politics update, we are officially in the election. Early voting has started. Early voting started specifically in Virginia. So for my Black News listeners in the VA, get y'all ass to the polls, okay? Get your ass down to the polls. And I say that because, of course, obviously, we would love for everyone to exercise their right to vote. Yes, our ancestors literally died for these rights and for all of the progress that we have made up until today. Yes, of course. We know this election is critical. We've heard it all over and over again. But I do not want people to get too complacent. I feel like a couple things can happen. One. Because Joe Biden is no longer in the election and people are feeling a little bit of relief and they're not as stressed out because of the fact that our candidate for president on the Democratic side isn't elderly, people relax. People, Some people taking their foot off the gas, okay? They like, well, I know what I'm doing. I'm taking my foot off the gas. But they showed the news panning to them early voting lines in Virginia and them red hats was out there. One thing you ain't got to convince certain groups of people to do is vote. And that's what is so, it's not hard for me to understand a lot of things. Like I I can see both sides. I may not agree. I may not like it. And I may think some people are kind of stupid, but you know, I, one thing I cannot understand is how people say voting doesn't matter and elections don't matter. And we literally see the other side or the other demographic who is not of color and is not a minority class or diverse class at the polls every t- opportunity they can get. That's what I don't understand that people don't connect, right? The, the, the dots ain't connecting. They literally are showing you that voting matters but for us we it don't matter i know people could say they don't matter to us but they're literally creating laws and have been creating laws that will disenfranchise us so i said I, that's one thing i just can't understand but again the point is them red hats was in that line and they was casting them ballots so call your aunties and your uncles call everybody that you know who was a voting age it's probably just too late in Virginia, but people, there's still voter registration opportunities in other states. You've only got a little bit of time left, a couple of days, couple of weeks. Register as many people as you can. You ain't got to waste your time with the people who be like, well, I don't know what, what Kamala's policies are. First of all, it's Kamala. And if you don't know what somebody's policies are at this point, you... It, it, it's a couple it's a couple cups missing from the cupboard okay the lights on but ain't nobody in the house okay if johnny has five apples that's all i'm saying so get yourselves together do not sleep do not take the foot off of the gas okay what are y'all preparing volunteer donate whatever you need to do do I'm a big believer when it's all said and done and when history comes back around or you are an old person or not even old, you are telling the story to the people and the generations behind you about what happened during these times and what you did during these times. Do not be on the wrong side. Yes, it's going to be, it's going to be unfortunate if you're on the wrong side, but also it's just going to be a better story when you can say that you was on the right side of history. So do not be on the wrong side. Okay. Let me know your thoughts about it. Have y'all registered? And if y'all already started early voting in your state, let me know where that is. Hit me up and let me know your thoughts. You can find me at Cornelia. 
So last week I I recorded this podcast episode literally a few minutes after there was a breaking news alert that Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs was being arrested and charged with a myriad of, of different things. At the time, we didn't have a lot of information. So many things have happened and we have a lot of information. It's also information overload because the market, the news cycles have been saturated with this information and rightfully so. This is one of the biggest news stories in music in a while. And I'm not saying a while, like years, because we had a similar cycle of news with R. Kelly, but it is shocking and it is a lot. So I'm, for the sake of this, am not going to rehash what you already know, right? He in there, they deny bail, we waiting. What I would like to kind of highlight and give people, um, offer, offer uh, 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 some advice, some of y'all going to get sued. And I'm not talking about the Black News listeners. I'm talking about if you log into social media, any site, any platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it. If you log into any site, you have a myriad, tons, loads of people just posting misinformation, just posting hot takes, just posting stuff not true stuff they read somebody posted somewhere in the big font with no research no verified sources just talking i saw one person post something about another subject and they said in a tweet right after this was on twitter they said i'm so they said oh dang this really blew up i was lying i ain't mean none of that the tweet they lied about had over a million views, thousands of shares. Some of y'all gonna get sued. When it comes to talking about current events and hot topics, and I learned this from news. Now on black news, you know, I can't have spirited conversations with you, the black news listeners, and I be talking to a microphone by myself, but I try to always say, that's why I be saying allegedly so much, y'all. I don't be saying that, yeah, it's kind of amusing and it's funny how much you, it's just randomly thrown out there, but I try to stay away from saying things that I don't know for a fact or saying things that I did not read directly reported by a news publication or someone else. I, you ain't gonna, you ain't, ain't gonna say never cause sometimes people mess up and that's how people get caught up. But I try my best to not just be making up stuff. Why? Because I don't care how small you think you are or how low on the food chain you are. Never forget the fact that your ass can get sued. I ain't got no money for legal fees. Okay. I don't have a legal defense team waiting to clean up mess. If I be telling lies. So I just want to first put that out there. I understand we are in a time of social media and we are a time of clickbait and people making money off of interaction and engagement and impressions online. But don't let your need to get you, make you a cup of a little $40 have you like Tasha K, allegedly. Okay, you see how I did that? You see how I did that? Allegedly. Because allegedly, she was talking about Cardi B making things up, allegedly. Got sued, popped for a couple million dollars. You ain't never too small to get sued, allegedly. You see how I just did that? Allegedly. I don't know if they're, I don't know, I don't know the case, but I'm speaking about that. So with that in mind, my advice, and I'm going to take this as well. Something is reported about what is going on. Verify the sources. Is it in a news publication? And now I know some news stations, people, Fox News got sued for seven, over $700 million for lying. Okay. They was lying about them voting machines. So some publications be lying as well. However, I would be more willing to 
report on something that is being said um, by a direct source, an article I read, someone saying it out of their mouth, an interview, so on, versus somebody just making a meme with the big font posted it on Facebook. Let's verify our sources. People also been throwing random names into the mix, associating them with bad or guilty behavior and crimes. Y'all, if you do not know for a fact that that person was committing a crime, do not associate with them with the, associate them with the crime and do not be telling and spreading misinformation saying they committed a crime. I'll give you a, a scenario how that could backfire or how that could hurt the person you're talking about. Let's say, and this is entertainment industry. People, people have this idea that people be friends in entertainment, right? Which is baffling because I know y'all ain't friends with some of y'all coworkers. I know y'all clock into that job and y'all ain't friends with everybody, but you're cordial. Y'all kiki it up. Y'all go to the work lunch every now and then. If it's a team out and you be in the team, in the group picks, y'all be doing them team and building exercises. I know y'all was at the escape room that night, that night that y'all had to do the team building. I know you was at bowling with, with your teammates. Hollywood is the same way. Yes, there are nuances and yes, some people some shady dealings and yes, some people be closer than others. But for the most part, some of these people just be entertainment colleagues. You only want to burn our bridges so you see him, chop him up. Hey, what's good? You good? Dab, dab, dab. Take a picture. Cool, cool, cool. Kiki, kiki, kiki. Move on with your life. But what people have been doing lately, especially in regards to this this major music event that we have, we have conversations about, pulling up old pictures and pulling up um, examples and interviews where somebody was seen standing next to somebody and they all, then they ultimately say or decide that person is guilty as well, or that person is a victim as well because they were seen standing next to talking with or taking a picture with that person, which could ultimately, again, that could affect somebody's livelihood. Because let's say you lie and make up a story and say, this person been with them the whole time and they probably been doing bad as doing bad too. I heard they was in there and I heard they was at the freak off. I heard they was at the freak off. They were at the freak off. Let's say that person has an endorsement deal, a brand deal, or some money on the table. Now the rumor is spread that they was at the freak off and now they're taking away their livelihood because they don't, that brand don't want to be associated with that. When in, in actuality, it could be a possibility that person was not participating in that activity. You get the point? You see what I'm, where I'm going with this? People going to end up getting sued and knock on wood. Ain't, hey, I ain't going to be the one. Another thing that has happened which is another example of us needing to stop taking everything at face value, use our critical thinking skills and, and just consider that there may be some shadiness behind this or people may be outright lying. There was a book released last week or this past week that was allegedly the diary entries of Kim Porter and it was released and promoted as if this were her words talking about her experience with her child's father, which is Puff Daddy and talking about some of some bad experiences, things she went through, just a lot of trauma and turmoil. I did not read the book because I'm not buying that. Because allegedly one of her friends posted on social media and said, that's not her words. Those are not her words. They literally said, there is no book. There never was. Several people continue to speak about and spread blatant lies regarding this mystery manuscript as if it were true. People, it's not. Kim would never do such a thing. And that's the honest to God truth. Y'all. You know how, now, listen, in some alternate reality, maybe the words were hers, maybe not. Who knows? But if that is true and that book is not or was not written by her, her diary entry, final words, nothing. You know how psychotic you have to be 
to write fake diary entries from the perspective of a woman who is no longer with us, get it published and promote it and sell it and make money off of that? That don't sound psychotic. You know how crazy you have to be to do that? Now, I know people be crazy, okay? I know people be crazy. I had some stalk. I done had some stalkers, okay? I done bumped up into some crazy, some crazy people. Hey, on occasion. But you know how crazy you have to be to do that. Imagine something happened to you, one of your best friends, or your mother. God forbid. Let's say something happened to your mama, and all of a sudden a book come out. Her last words, speaking out, so-and-so's mama speaks out to get behind the real story. I'm like, what? What is wrong with these people? But again, don't get your ass sued. Don't get sued. Because if I were her estate, and I'm not saying this is what they should be doing. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, what if I, hey, it was me, okay? If, it's, if, if this was me. I would get my attorney on the line. I would get the book pulled. I would get the production or the printing stopped. And I would also sue to get the money that was made so far because I saw people already on TikTok posting videos of them reading the book. Why y'all reading a book that she didn't even write? Allegedly. We really got to get it together as a people, okay? So I just, again, please be careful with that. Please be careful because you ain't never too little or too low on the totem pole to get the law called on you, okay? And they ain't about to show up, hey, mm -mm, I ain't got it, baby, okay? I ain't got it. Mm, It ain't never that serious, okay? It ain't never that serious. Let me know y'all thoughts about it though. Um, As this case continues on and new developments happen, I will come and I will report on that for Black News. But we already know about the baby oil, okay? We already know about the Nobel. We already know that uh, he up in that thing. We already know that everybody in their mama now is doing interviews. We do not know witnesses. We do not know what evidence there is. We do not know if there's somebody else on the list. We do not know if there are accomplices. We do not know none of that. We do know we support victims. We give people the benefit of the doubt. We do not deny someone's opportunity to tell their story and their truth. And we just going to wait patiently to see what's up. We don't know how long it's going to take for the trial to start. I think it's going to, trials be taking like a year to start, some longer. Listen, Conrad Murray sat up in that jail for a long time before we got to that Michael Jackson trial. That man was locked up. So we don't know. It could take a couple months. It could take a year or longer. We just going to stand by. Let me know your thoughts about all of this. If you know people that be personally lying, and I know you do because I know some people personally who be on who be on social media lying, knowing good and well they don't know no, you don't know nobody in that in that circle. You don't know nobody in the entertainment industry. How you know? Literally, we can literally. I see people who know no one within the entertainment industry posting air quote, factual information, knowing good and damn well, they don't know nobody. Y'all, it's crazy times out here. Be careful. Let me know what y'all thought about, what y'all think about it all. Hit me up. You can find me at Cornelia on social media. Honey, homecoming 2024 is right. Yo, it's homecoming season is right around the corner. Hey, it's Homecoming season right around the corner. We starting HBCU football. First of all, Hampton University beat Howard University in Washington, D.C. at Audi Field. Football beat them again. I don't do that whole real HU, but whatever. We know who's thriving and what 
the better university and the more, uh, uh, the, uh, the rich in spirit university is. And Howard ain't be Hampton since the Obama administration in football. Let's just keep it real. The last time Howard beat Hampton in football, Barack Obama was in office. We didn't had two other administrations since. We didn't had two, two, two since then. But that in particular, these HBCU matchups, these showdowns, North Carolina Central, North Carolina A and T, all these classics, whatever they gearing us up for HBCU homecoming season. And with that, I am preparing to do, I'm not going to do it today. I won't, I got to prepare the list. I'm preparing to do my HBCU homecoming rules, do's and don'ts for 2024. That, and I'm, I want y'all input. Okay. What what are some do's and don'ts? Now it could, it could apply to the PWI because you know, at the PWI, y'all be having the black, the black student union get togethers during homecoming seasons. I, I see, I see y'all cooking. I see what y'all be doing. Okay. I see what y'all be doing on campus. Y'all be gathering the blacks. Y'all be having celebrations, parties, organizations, organizations coming together. Y'all have tailgate. Y'all be having stuff. I, I see you cooking. If you go to school in the Midwest, it'd be cold out there. Y'all be having y'all winter coats on, but I see you cooking. The rules can also apply to the PWI as long as it's the black stuff. Now we ain't going to talk about what they be doing on the white side of homecoming. I don't know what they be doing. They be doing kegs. I don't, they be having kegs. I don't know. Well, we don't have no keg. The closest thing to a keg we got at the HBCU homecoming is the Omega oil. That's the closest thing. That is the HBCU version of a keg. The oil, the noop juice, the Sigma punch. Do IOTA's got a drink? What they be drinking? What y'all be drinking? What, what y'all be having? Alphas, what y'all got? I ain't never, Alphas, y'all got a cocktail? The point is, let me know off top what are some HBCU do's and don'ts or rules, homecoming edition. And it's changed because I'm 40 plus now, right? Last time I did it, I was also 40 plus, but now I'm I'm seeping in too. I'm getting comfortable into the 40 plus. So the rules for up for 40 plus will not be the rules for people coming back on the yard after having graduated one, two, three, four, five years ago. It's different. It's a different, it's a different type of, of, of experience. Cause I'm going to tell you one rule going to be go back to the hotel room, go back to the room. If you, your feet hurt, you hungry, you ain't ate, you need a nap. You did too much. You're trying to drink, whatever. No, it's go back to the room. You don't got to, you ain't got nothing to prove. You ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. You ain't got to show that you can, you can be on the yard from 12 noon all the way to two o'clock in the morning. You ain't got to let, you ain't got to show us that you can hang and still drink like you did back in 01. You don't got to, you don't got to, you ain't got to impress us, baby. You can go back to the hotel. If you want to go back to the hotel at eight o'clock PM, go back, back. It's okay. Go back to the room. Order you some Postmates. Get you some dinner in the room. Turn on your Netflix. Your little shot. I know you. I know you packed your iPad. Put the iPad on. Watch your show. And and get your put get your skincare together. When your homegirls come back or your homeboys come back to the hotel, you can even go in their room and sit on the bed and and, and kick it up. But you ain't got nothing to prove. Go back to the hotel. One of the other ones that I'm gonna put I'm gonna put on the list, and that's all I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all because I got to put together the full list. If your spouse, I'm going to say it again. I said this last time. If your wife, husband, spouse, boyfriend, boo, significant other, partner, your domestic partner, if they are not social, if they got an attitude, if they're going to have a problem with you, and if somebody come up to you, hit you, hit you with the where my hug at, and they going to get mad, leave them at the house. They can't even, they can't even fly in. Leave them back at home. They need to stay. They need to stay in Philly. Leave them back in Chicago. They can't come to homecoming. Homecoming is literally one big hug. Y'all remember that Michael Ely hug? When Michael Ely hugged Megan Good in front of, um, what's his name? Jonathan Majors. Homecoming ain't nothing but the hug. You gonna leave homecoming smelling like cologne. Neck. Neck gonna be smelling like cologne. Perfume. 
boys, men gonna have lipstick on their cheek. The red is gonna be Ruby Woo. It's gonna be Fenty lip balm all over your husband. Not because don't why we people want him. Don't want him. We we went to school with him. We really don't want him. We just hug. I ain't seen you. I ain't seen you in a minute, player. I ain't seen I ain't seen you in a minute. Give me the hug. Where my hug at? It's gonna be number where my hug at. They got an attitude. They don't know how to be. They can't come. What are other lit things should be added to the HBCU homecoming do's and don'ts list? I am open to suggestions. Hit me up. Um, especially if you're younger, I need to know what the young what the young folks talk about these days. It's probably the same stuff that we experience, but hey, I feel like it's different. Okay, I feel like it's different. Hit me up though. Let me know your thoughts your suggestions you can find me at canelia on social media on this week's episode of black news we gave a quick politics update early voting has officially started in certain states We also talked about the Diddy news and the fact that some people might get caught up in a misinformation loop and possibly getting sued. We also gave a quick update about HBCU homecoming season and started the conversation around the homecoming do's and don'ts for 2024. Hit me up. Let me know your thoughts about all of these topics or some or none. And I'll check back with you guys next time. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again for supporting the podcast by sharing, liking, subscribing, and rating five stars on your favorite podcast app. To find more information about me, you can check me out at at Cornelia on social media, as well as on my website, which is Cornelia.com. And as always, thanks for supporting, and I'll be back next week with new topics and a new episode. <laughs>